from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Week. Now, here's John Furrier. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is theCUBE here in New York City on the ground for Consensus 2018, part of Blockchain Week. New York City, I'm John Furrier, your co-host of the Cube, and Enrique Rodriguez is here with me. He's a, he's a blockchain guru, and he's part of the crypto consulting group. Welcome to the Cube. Nice to be here. So I love Thanks the Bitcoin uh, little thing there. Yeah. Come on, you holding some Bitcoin right now? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So tell me about your uh, project, because uh, in the hallways here and checking in on what's going on, you're working with Andrew Prell, yeah. Cube alumni, so on a cool project. Explain what that is. So the project with Andrew or what we do? What you guys do first. Yeah, so essentially, you know, there's a big problem right now with people trying to get into the space. There's a lot of pitfalls newcomers fall victim to. Uh, there's not a lot of ed education out there. It's really fragmented across the internet. Um, so what we're really trying to do is provide you know, really great resources to people that are looking to get into the space. We essentially want to be the on-ramp the on um, for people looking to get into the crypto space. Where are you located? Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, it's a different location. I think that's why we stand out quite a bit because yeah. we're trying to bring such a new and disruptive technology to a place that's not, you know, so uh, on the leading edge of technology sometimes. And you know what's cool about it too is I live in Silicon Valley. It yeah. used to be the epicenter. Everyone's got to go to Silicon Valley. The blockchain phenomenon and crypto in general is a global thing. It is. It is not one place. You yeah. can be anywhere. Absolutely. So what are, what are you doing? What are you uh, working on with people? What are some of the things that you're, uh, projects you're attacking? What are some of the uh, Yeah, cool so things? right now we're, uh, we're really working on um, our educational events. Uh, we're really putting together just great content for people to come and, and, and join us and, and really just learn about the tech. Uh, we're also working with Andrew Prell from a Silicon Nexus project. Um, he's having an ICO soon, and, and one of the things we're doing for them is really auditing uh, the accounts that they have their tokens in. So they have, you know, in their tokenomics, they have funds set aside for the team, for the advisors, all these different things. And they also have 10 investment funds uh, that they're going to be uh, using to essentially get more developers to develop on their project. Uh, and so we'll be auditing those transactions that they send out just to uh, ensure the transparency and that people know the investors that are uh, putting their money into this project know where those funds are going. So basically it's an audit trail, but it's not code review. So when you do smart contracts, it's one aspect which is code review. Yeah. And the other side of the, the coin, so to speak, is the transactional efficiency and effectiveness. Yeah, no, absolutely. So if uh, you know, out of this wallet they send 10,000 droids to this developer or, or this project, you know, we are essentially going to be putting together reports uh, for that. So that, you know, there's all the auditing and the transparency uh, available. So you're automating his system end to end so he can manage it. Absolutely. His alternative is what? What's, what's his alternative? Um, Andrews in particular. Yeah, uh, I think he went to the big four and they really didn't know, I guess, display enough knowledge about the blockchain, the blockchain explorers and all those things and uh, really came in at a high price. And so instead of do it themselves, you know, it's something that we do on a regular basis, uh, you know, blockchain explorer just looking up transaction, it's second nature to us. So, I mean, it's really a good fit and it's an industry first. That's and so, awesome. you know, it really could, it really could be a breakthrough for ICOs to come. So we're hoping it works out well. Enrique, how did you get here? What's your journey? Uh, tell you, tell, you, tell uh, your story. It has been a while. So I'm 23 years old. Um, around the age of 20, I started hearing about Bitcoin and blockchain. I worked at uh, UPS in the international department in Louisville, which uh, if you're not familiar, we have the uh, Worldport, the biggest automated hub in the world. Uh, but we were having a lot of problems with the supply chain. You know, packages going missing, uh, invoices being fraudulent, a lot of manual paperwork. Uh, so really just looking into some of these problems and trying to find a solution, stumbled into blockchain and, and really went down the rabbit hole and Kevin came up since. Uh, started telling people about it, meeting with people in so coffee shops. became an shops. enthusiast, yeah. an evangelist. Yeah, and so I mean it's really grown from you know me meeting people in, in restaurants, coffee shops, and now we have office, we have eight consultants working with us, uh, and really trying to make a, a national network of people that can just educate um, you know, investors and individuals you know, on the technology. Are you, are you happy you made the move? Oh, so happy. You know, I work for myself now. It's really the happiest I've ever been. I'm passionate about something that, yeah. you know, could potentially change the world. And so I love the, the space I'm in. And just being here with so many like-minded individuals, you know, from 
so many different backgrounds. You know, it really is a beautiful thing that CoinDesk was able to put together here. And it's also cool, a lot of new people coming in, both old and young. I mean, old guys like me, yeah. we saw uh, Dan Bates on just before. You know, we're kindred spirits, we're the old dogs. He's doing real business, but the young guns are making it happen too. Absolutely. So it's, a, it's not Absolutely. about uh, ageism. Yeah. A lot of no. us old systems guys know that this is all kind of one big operating yeah. system. Even with our uh, with our clients, I mean, we have, we have people as young as 15 coming in like, hey, how do I figure this out? And, 85 people that don't even have email set up, you know, that want to get involved in the space. So, I mean, we have a wide spectrum of people. If you got that, an AOL account, we're ignoring you. Yeah, Although yeah. I just tried to turn mine on, I, I have to yeah. do the throwback. It is what it is. I got to ask you because one of the things I've really been a part of my whole life um, in uh, computer science is open source, even mm -hmm. when it was uh, Renegade and back yeah. in the old days. Now it's tier one. Open source cloud computing uh, has really, and open source in particular, really built the idea of a community. Absolutely. The blockchain community is very small, still young, tight-knit, and growing. So as people come in, what's your advice to uh, people entering the community? How they should align, yeah, so what should they do? This is, uh, this is something we have to deal with a lot. And so whenever, because a lot of the headlines that go around, you know, the Bitcoin bubble, you know, all the, the crazy gains, the Lambos, people come in with this mindset that it's a, it's a get-rich-quick thing. You know, they, they want to dump money into, you know, the newest ICO or the next big Bitcoin. And what we really have to educate them on is that, you know, this is a long-term play. We're still very early in this space. Um, you know, ne never invest anything that you're, you know, not willing to lose. And so a lot of these, we call them the commandments. I actually just did a podcast episode on them. Um, so there's a lot of just base level things that we try and enlighten our uh, newcomers in. And, and, you know, it's been really great because... You know, a lot of people, whenever they learn about this technology on under the surface, you know, it's just enlightening. And so it's been it's been great. The a community lot of businesses grows. are growing into the community. A lot of people are joining the community. But also a big trend is that big business and small, medium-sized businesses are looking at it as an opportunity. So I got to ask you the, the the question, right? Which is, I see a lot of people out there that are passing themselves off as code gurus yeah. because they bought Bitcoin in 2013. Oh, absolutely. They don't, but they haven't actually built anything. Yeah. So a lot of people are hiring fraudsters. So I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with trading Bitcoin and being involved in the currency. Yeah, absolutely. But the difference between someone who buys currency and builds the next generation with the community, mm -hmm. how does someone vet that that person? How does some as a business owner, how do you figure out the pretenders from the players? Yeah, I think it's really about getting to know the person that you're talking to about this, seeing how transparent they are, their ideologies, why they're in the space, why they bought Bitcoin. A lot of these fundamental questions that you know you could tell a lot um, about a person, you know, from their answers, um, because we've come across that a lot. You know, whenever the reason I started this company is because you know over the past three years or so, it's been a lot of trial and error, really trying to figure this stuff out. And so, you know, just I to, always uh, ask too, what have you built? Yeah, no, absolutely. And so we're, we're currently actually uh, in the beta version of a, a platform that we want to build that's essentially going to allow us to connect these consultants yeah. as well as a portfolio tracker, but a lot right, of good I things I got to ask the you work. the question then. What's the coolest thing you've done? <sighs> the coolest thing I've done? Probably getting my pilot's license a month after my driver's license in high school. Um, just in general, it was, you know, to be able to leave school and go fly planes um, while all my best friends were in class, you know, it was really, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> Surreal. Yeah. Enrique, great to chat with you. Uh, you as well. Awesome. You as well. Awesome voice. So it's good to have you on theCUBE and uh, good luck with your venture. Thank you. Uh, with Andrew Prell. That's a cool project and yeah. all the things you work on. Best, uh, best of success to you. Enrique Rodriguez here on theCUBE, breaking it down. A lot of new action going on, a lot of great voices, a lot of talent coming into the community. Of course, it is a community, it's tight knit, it's early growing super fast, and this is the crypto action, this is theCUBE, bringing it all to you. I'm John Furrier, we'll be watching after the short break, we'll be right back.